Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this month's QI Community Webinar. Uh, just past the hour, or just past half hour by International Apple Time, so we'll make a start. And uh, my name's Tony Lemke. I'm a GP in Austin, in North South, Northern New South Wales, and chair of the QI Community Faculty. And it's a beautiful, sunny day here. In fact, I'll put my webcam on so you can all enjoy it. And uh, we're joined by Alison Konacek in QI Community Central. And special guest is Dan Schmidt. Good afternoon, Dan. Good afternoon to you all. Thanks for tuning in. So um, most of you would have joined one of our webinars before. We'll be taking questions in the chat panel today, and we'll address them to Dan as they come up. Now, Dan, tell us about yourself and where are you? Uh, so I'm located at Adelaide, uh, so Headspace Adelaide, which is uh, right in the heart of the CBD in Adelaide. Uh, I work specifically for the Headspace Youth Early Psychosis Program, and what I do is I'm the stakeholder and community liaison for the program. Uh, this is a big part of one of the components of the uh, uh, Headspace Youth Early Psychosis model. It's all about increasing the awareness of psychosis and just ensuring that um, uh, service providers and the community are on the same page about what we can provide and how we can go about doing it as best as we can together. So Dan, we're familiar with Headspace. They're, uh, they've been around for a while now and they're all over the place. How many Headspaces are there and how's Headspace going generally? Uh, Headspace is going very well. Um, uh, I believe there's about 102 or 103 throughout uh, the nation at the moment. Um, uh, it's essentially growing each week. So at the moment, I just say there's around 100. Um, so, so generally, um, uh, previously over 10 years, has generally just uh, generally dealt with those mild to moderate mental health issues with uh, young people, things like um, anxiety, depression, stress, bullying, uh, but also physical health, um, uh, vocational and education, and uh, drug and alcohol abuse as well. Uh, however, Headspace Adelaide is one of the six centres around Australia that's providing the Youth Early Psychosis Program. So certainly Headspace has been a boon for us in primary care and general practice, Dan, and mm -hmm. giving us some resources we can use for our young people through all sorts of troubles that they may have related to um, depression, anxiety, drug use, counselling, sexual issues, um, uh, employment issues. So Headspace has been a, been a wonderful resource for us. Some of these patients can be very difficult to manage. But you say Headspace Adelaide has particularly been chosen as one of a special Headspace Centre for the Youth Early Psychosis Program. Can you tell us a bit more about that? That's right. Uh, Headspace Adelaide is one of the six centres uh, throughout the nation that operates the Headspace Youth Early Psychosis Program. Uh, now, this is assisting those young people who are either uh, have experienced first episode psychosis, experiencing first episode psychosis, or who may be deemed at risk of, of uh, developing psychosis. Um, it's a special specialised early intervention service, and it's based on the uh, Early Psychosis Prevention and Intervention Centre uh, model, which is the EPIC model. Uh, which has been developed over the last sort of uh, 20 years uh, by Professor Patrick McGorry uh, through Melbourne and uh, Origin as well. So um, it, uh, delivering this youth early psychosis program, Adelaide Headspace is one of them. There, how many others are there that, that, that we can contact for this sort there of research? There are five others. Um, uh, I'm based in Adelaide, as I said, so some of my specific um, uh, parts of the presentation will be about Adelaide today. Uh, however, they all do operate from the same model. And those centres are uh, located in Adelaide, which is where I am, uh, Darwin, uh, Bentley, which is in South East Melbourne, Western Sydney. Now they kind of provide a, a spug and, uh, hub and spoke program for a, throughout a few centres there. Uh, forgive my pronunciation on this one, but uh, Joondalup, I'm not sure if that's correct or not, in Western Australia, and Southport in Queensland, which isn't too far from the Gold Coast, I believe. So you're concentrating on psychosis, Dan, which is a particularly scary condition for our patients to experience, but also uh, difficult for us to manage and hard to get resources to assist us when we have patients. Tell us, is psychosis a, a common problem? Um, it's not a common issue. It's certainly not as common as uh, anxiety and depression. However, like you said, for a young person, it can be an extremely uh, scary, confusing, confronting time. Uh, and same for their family and network as well. Uh, so that's why it's extremely important that we have the resources and, and staff equipped um, to, do, to assist these young people in this time. Uh, because as we all know, um, uh, the consequences of uh, untreated psychosis can be um, uh, quite, quite devastating uh, for the young person and the family. Um, 
I'm just gonna we've gone to the next slide. Um, just gonna briefly cover what psychosis is. Uh, just for anyone who may be um interested in that. Um, essentially, look like any mental health issue. It um uh, ranges from person to person in, in terms of the um impact it has on people. But generally, people with psychosis, it's um it's all around that confused thinking and having problems with the way that they interpret the real world. Uh, like most likely to develop in adolescence or late adulthood, which is why the um, Headspace Youth Early Psychosis Program is aimed at those uh, people who are uh, in that stage of life and um, looking to get recoveries uh, and um, get help as soon as possible. Uh, because the shorter the true duration of untreated treated diet, uh, psychosis is, uh, the much better chance we have of a full recovery, and many young people do make that full recovery. So I don't think that's um, something well known, Dan, that if you get onto psychosis early, if the, if, the, if the initial episode doesn't last too long, that there is a good chance of full recovery. So psychosis doesn't equate with schizophrenia. Uh, not necessarily. Schizophrenia um, is, is more when the symptoms of psychosis generally last longer than about six months. Um, there is uh, um, many, and you know, same, same with schizophrenia, many people with schizophrenia go on to their full uh, fulfilling life, so, but it's, they're not always necessarily linked. So Patrick McGorry is the champion of early intervention in psychosis services and, and, and he's, his program is what you base the care that you offer for your people. That's correct. It's been uh, you know evidence-based program developed over 20 years uh, by Patrick McGorry. Um, it uh, is currently um, uh, previous to the Headspace Youth Early Psychosis Program. Uh, there was no sort of early intervention youth psychosis program in the state of South Australia. So we are extremely excited and extremely lucky to have this program. Um, and it consists of uh, 16 main components which make up the the whole model, so to speak. Um, these range from, well, we'll be going through them in a bit, but um, they range from everything from uh, community engagement and development right through to workforce development, um, education and training, uh, continuing care. And we have a very strong multidisciplinary team uh, made up of uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, mental health nurses, uh, occupational therapists, um, uh, the list goes on, really. So who do you see there, Dan? How do you um, classify the people that are referred to your service? Uh, so basically, the, the way it works is if a referral is made to the service, um, uh, a team of two from a, what's called our mobile assessment and treatment team will go out and see a young person where they feel comfortable. Uh, more often than not, then this is in their um, own house, but we'll get to that in a bit because the program, uh, just speaking to the current slide, is um, sort of split into two programs. So those uh, who have experienced first episode psychosis receive a program uh, for, that goes for about two to five years. Um, uh, the, when we take the referrals up to their 20, 26th birthday, so um, if a young person is referred to us at 25 and 11 months, we're not going to, we're you know, still going to see them for the duration of up to five years. So in theory, we could be, still be seeing young people up to their 30. But this is a specific early psychosis program. Um, it, it's for those who have, um, uh, have you know, haven't been uh, receiving uh, treatment for psychosis for more than 12 months or a period of 24 months untreated psychosis uh, because it is specifically developed for those in the early stages of psychosis. And then we also run the at-risk of early psychosis program. Now we'll get into what ultra high risk and at risk of psychosis is in a moment, um, but these are um, uh, similar, um, age 12 to 25, um, are reporting a functional decline and having one of the following components, um, uh, um, schizotypal personality disorder or a family history of psychosis. Quite a good indicator of uh, those of being at risk of psychosis is um, uh, having a parent who's experienced psychosis or a, a first blood sibling, uh, and then um, uh, psychotic symptoms for generally less than a week or some sub-threshold psychotic symptoms. So people who have symptoms who have been there for more than a year at present uh, would, 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 would receive care from a more traditional uh, mental health service rather than from your early intervention uh, that's, yeah, that's correct because we are specialised in early intervention and that's what the model is based around. Um, uh, we, we, you know, if, if we had a referral where we saw someone who had been receiving that um, uh, treatment for, for more than ongoing, it would still obviously um, uh, be an assessment and a discussion with our team as to what the most suitable um, uh, treatment is going to be. And so um, the fact that you see at-risk psychosis people suggest that there's good evidence that early intervention makes a difference to long-term outcomes. 
I guess that's reflected in the aims of your service. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we know and the evidence shows, and like anything, um, it, it is about detecting those at risk or in the early stages of psychosis uh, so that we can get them the help that they need as soon as possible. It's all about reducing that duration of untreated psychosis, um, uh, avoiding hospital or emergency departments and admissions if we can, because um, you know quite often uh, these situations can be uh, detrimental to a young person's mental health. Uh, it's all about reducing the severity and impacts of the sy symptoms and about that uh, you know, getting seen as soon as possible, which is why we make it as easy as possible in the Headspace Youth Early Psychosis Program for young people to be seen as quickly and as easily as possible in their own home or wherever they feel comfortable. Yeah, so that's a, that's a new model for Headspace then, to have this model of outreach. So if we're not in Jundalup or in central Adelaide, re referral pathways aren't necessarily closed to our patients. Uh, not necessarily. Well, uh, any young people can see a um, uh, speak to Headspace, or there's uh, eheadspace.org.au where people can speak to qualified counsellors uh, online anonymously, um, almost 24 hours a day. And there's also the phone line that goes along with that as well. So there are still options out there for those who, you know, outside of the catchment areas. I'll just speak to our assertive outreach slide at the moment because you will see almost down at the bottom of that slide sort of an outlying dot which I'll speak to, to which kind of comes back to your question, Tony. Um, the assertive outreach, once the referral is received, they're seen by uh, two members of the mobile assessment and treatment team. And generally we can see these young people within 24 hours, which for South Australia has kind of been huge because this is something we've not really seen. This assertive before. Uh, then from there, there's generally a psychiatry, uh, psychiatry review within 48 hours. And it's these two clinicians going out to provide this in-home assessment. Now, I can't speak for the other centres, but at Adelaide, we operate that service from 8.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. weekdays. And we are looking at moving into weekends very soon. It's just a bit of a rostering issue where we go with that at the moment. But you can see from the map on the left side of the um, uh, slide here, uh, Adelaide's located in the middle there, and, and those uh, dots we see are all the postcodes which, which we are seeing young people. Um, our program is an assertive service, so we do see people anywhere 30 kilometres from the Adelaide CBD. Um, why we don't see people further beyond that, uh, young people, is because we are an assertive service, and if something goes wrong or we need clinicians to be seeing this young person as soon as possible, that's a little hard to do when they're 50, 60, 70 k's out of, of where we are. Um, so those uh, young people are often uh, with the uh, community mental health teams. However, you will see at the bottom of the map on the left, um, there's, a, there's a few outlying dots, and one being right down the um, uh, south of um, South Australia, almost at a regional centre called Victor Harbour. Um, that person was uh, in a situation where they were um, uh, well-functioning enough and had the family support in which they could travel to within 30 kilometres of the Adelaide CBD and see us at a headspace centre located in the southern, southern suburbs um, and receive the treatment from there. So we weren't going to deny that young person the service um, because they could meet us within that um, uh, boundary. So access to mental health services in a timely, in a timely way is often a great barrier. It's That's really right. interesting that you have such speedy service and long hours. I haven't heard that term assertive outreach before. What, what, it sounds good. What do, what, what do you mean when you say that? <laughs> it does sound like, well, it, it essentially means that we can get to a person uh, who's looking for help uh, really, really quickly. Um, we can be assertive in what we do and the care we provide. Um, we provide that assessment and care um, in their house or in their school or wherever they're comfortable to meet us. Um, I know some workers have uh, uh, perhaps even meeting some young people at cafes, uh, McDonald's restaurants, or in the in a park, wherever they feel comfortable to undertake an assessment or their treatment. Fantastic. Uh, we, do also, we do also offer services in the at the Headspace Adelaide site if a young person is comfortable coming to us. Uh, from there, we, we also um, administer the medication. We run our depot clinics and clozapine clinics as well from the Adelaide site. So, Dan, when you've uh, when a young person has contacted you or been referred to you, I think you mentioned there are a number of core components to the care that your service offers them. That's correct. And I think we're going to that one on the next slide. Here we are. So the main, um, this is based on the EPIC model, as I said, uh, developed for HIEP Headspace. Some people call it HEP, some people call it HIEP, but it's the same thing, the Headspace Youth Early Psychosis Program. 
I'm not going to go through every single one of these uh, because that would take up a fair bit of time, but I'll just highlight some of the ones that um, uh, we're focusing on. Uh, community education and awareness, um, that's essentially where my role comes in. I go out to um, service providers like emergency departments, uh, uh, clinics, doctors, uh, community mental health teams, uh, and, and just let them know what the program is all about, how they can refer to the program and the young people that we are seeing, just to ensure that those pathways are open. But it's also raising awareness for young people, families around uh, psychosis as well, because it is still one of those things in mental health that isn't discussed as perhaps as often as depression and anxiety. Um, it, it's even got components of um, marketing. Um, for example, today we're launching a digital marketing campaign uh, aimed at parents um, whose young children may be experiencing psychosis just so that they know what psychosis is and how they can get them the assistance they need. And moving on to the component below that, um, the ease of access to service. Uh, we all know when a young person is uh, reaching out for assistance in mental health or a family is reaching out for assistance, we want it to be as easy as possible for those people to get the assistance that they need. Um, and if we can provide that really quick follow-up and a really quick assessment, uh, we're going to have better outcomes right from the get-go, which is fantastic. Uh, below that is the uh, home-based assessment and care, which we've discussed. Um, the uh, two uh, uh, below that, the access to youth-friendly inpatient care and subacute beds. Now, the Headspace Adelaide Centre does not offer those because those do not exist in South Australia at this point, so that's more of a state issue than a centre issue. Uh, but moving on to the next column, uh, we have that continuing case management from a range of workers. Um, once they're assessed and if they are deemed appropriate for the program, a uh, 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 plan will be put together and we'll look at, you know, who's going to be able to provide them with the, the, the therapy and case management that they need. Um, then moving on to the ones below that, we have psychiatrists that work with us and psychologists as well, but also a really strong functional recovery team, uh, which is those who provide um, uh, assistance around just getting back into uh, general functioning, social functioning, work and employment as well. Because when we speak to young people, when they come into our centre and we say, you know, what do you want? Uh, the answer isn't always, you know, I want to get better. The answer is more often than not, I want a girlfriend. And um, number two, I want a job. Um, so we can't help them with the girlfriend, but we, we do our best to help them. With them. Because, um, we got a bit of a feedback there. Um, but um, these young people, we, we provide them with the assistance they need because if young people are living in the community and doing what they enjoy doing, uh, the evidence shows that they're going to be able to make that full recovery. Um, and the functional recovery team also provides group programs, which have been incredibly popular at the moment. Uh, we run a range of group programs, ranging from just casual catch-ups with other members of the, you know, other young people who are in the Youth Early Psychosis program, uh, right through to sporting activities, uh, going out to movies, things like that. Um, we even have a therapy dog that comes in once a week, which is um, absolutely fantastic for the young people, but I think it's more... Uh, Somehow all the staff managed to make it down to when, when the dog's in as well, so it's a, for the staff as well. But that's absolutely great to see the staff and um, young people working together in such a harmonious environment. Uh, we also provide the mobile outreach, which we've spoken about, and the family programs and peer support. Um, uh, the family are extremely important when it comes to a young person who's at risk of psychosis or has experienced psychosis because they're the ones who are living with them. Um, our workers can see them, you know, um, it, on, on and off as often as they as they need to, but it's the family who are, really need the support around how they can assist a young person with psychosis. And we've developed a few resources uh, around um, how the family can assist people with psychosis. Uh, we have family programs in the evenings to provide them with that information. And we are also in the process of establishing a peer support program where we're actually getting uh, uh, young people who have had um, uh, mental health issues and psychosis before uh, uh, to perhaps be a bit of a mentor around what the program is and what their journey is going to look like from there on in. Um, it's been, you know, the evidence has shown to be that um, extremely beneficial for the program as well. Um, we also uh, work in partnership with many other organisations, which we need to just because that's the nature of work. Um, we, we all rely on each other to provide the best outcomes for the young people that we are seeing. And we also um, provide that ultra high risk of detection and care. Now, I think the next slide, uh, if we could, Alison, goes on to speak about that ultra high risk a bit more and what that means. There we go. Brilliant. Um, oh, that's just, that's, just, that's just the cover slide for it. Do you have anything to add, Tony? No, well, ultra high risk is a, is a really interesting area for you to be in, Dan, because it would be an unusual 
place for mental health service to focus. So I'm interested to hear how you manage that. Yeah, it, it is extremely interesting because we are treating people who don't necessarily have uh, psychosis yet. Um, but it's important to remember that developing a psychotic illness doesn't usually just happen out of the blue. Um, there are certain things that make a person more likely to experience an episode of psychosis. Um, the term at risk of developing psychosis uh, means that in comparison to the general population, this young person has a higher chance of developing psychosis because of a range of factors. Um, those factors, like I said before, um, young people who have a, a parent who's experienced uh, psychosis, um, young people who are already starting to experience those um, uh, changes in thoughts or perceptions, and um, uh, or young people who are um, uh, perhaps using drugs and alcohol as well. Um, ultra high risk, I guess, has previously been defined as the prodromal period, which is something we've all, um, or many of us, have heard about. Um, whereas prodromal is retrospective, ultra high risk is kind of predictive. We're trying to predict the young people who may be more at risk of developing psychosis than another. Um, uh, and and these these young people who are deemed at ultra high risk um, may not even go on to develop an episode of psychosis. In fact, only about thirty percent of young people we've seen at the moment go on to develop um, go on to our first episode psychosis program so it really is starting to treat the young people and just letting them know how they can cope with what may happen to them in the future a little better so that they um uh, you know can lessen the symptoms of psychosis so it's the nature of that treatment once identified as being at high risk is it psychological treatment or is it pharmacological treatment once again, depends on the situation, but it, it, it is uh, therapy based. Um, uh, cognitive behaviour therapy comes into it um, uh, really strong, uh, but it, that does you know, it depends on a case by case basis, and that will come down to our strong multidisciplinary team around how that young person um, is managed. Uh, with some, a lot of it can be um, uh, even, even diet management, exercise, um, uh, uh, looking looking at their drug and alcohol intake as well, and around that um, uh, cognitive behaviour therapy. Um, uh, Provided by a key by a key worker, we also have a look at the other other mental health issues that they may be experiencing as well. Uh, quite a high rate of anxiety and depression, um, which is um, not uncommon uh, uncommon for a lot of young people anyway. And um, uh, there's also that family support offered by a key worker or a family cl clinician. Um, those in the ultra high risk program of the within the Headspace Youth Early Psychosis Program um, don't necessarily receive anything less, it's just over a shorter, shorter period of time. And once again, if they do go on to develop first episode psychosis, then they then can move into the next program, which we'll be speaking about at the moment. So there are, any, are there any tools that we as uh, primary care providers can use to assess whether a young person we're seeing is particularly high risk of psychosis? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the one of the um, good, very easy ones to use is called the PQ16, um, and that's a very brief screening tool with a range of 16 questions, which is where the 16 comes from in the name, um, uh, which are just um, true and false answers of questions. Um, some of these um, can seem quite strange for a young person. Um, they can seem like strange questions, particularly if they haven't had any of the um, symptoms of psychosis yet. Um, things like, um, do you ever get the feeling radio messages are giving you um, uh, a specialized for you or do you feel paranoid that people are watching you have you ever looked in front of a mirror and started to see the features of your face change and things like that um, have you ever seen or heard anything that may not necessarily be there um, and then we measure how distressed this has made the young person feel if they do answer true to this uh, question um, it's a very simple tool i i I believe you can look it up online, PQ16, and that can be um, undertaken by any mental health clinician. So generally, if we look at someone with a score of six or more on that, um, is, is perhaps um, uh, someone who may be at risk of early psychosis. And then there are other tools you can use for a more comprehensive um, overview. That's right. Moving on to the next. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Alison. Uh, the comp comprehensive assessment of at-risk mental state. And this is a more in-depth survey as opposed to the true, true, and false, uh, true false questionnaire, which um, I won't go into too much, but it outlines four main factors, the unusual thought content, um, non-bizarre ideas, perceptual abnormalities, things like um, uh, hallucinations and um, hearing things that may not be there, and the disorganised speech as well. So I guess having done that assessment, you may decide that someone is at risk of um, psychosis or that they may be having an 
first episode psychosis or an early psychosis, which puts them in a different category for your service. That's right. That's right. And then we do have, we do offer uh, for those who have had the first episode psychosis, um, the first episode psychosis program, which is uh, goes for a longer length of time, uh, generally two years. But if we feel the young person needs a bit more assistance over that two years or ongoing care, it can go be provided up to five years. Um, and the, uh, it also has to be um, uh, the young person has to be reporting a decline in general functioning. Um, so there's the um, uh, score of functioning. Oh, there's a thirty percent drop in sofas. I won't try and uh, get that wrong at the moment because I've forgotten what it stands for. Um, but if they um, uh, have a score lower than fifty for the first twelve months or there, just generally, if they're a uh, declining functioning as well, it's um, uh, an indicator for us that they. Um, could, could benefit from the first episode psychosis program. Uh, but like we said, it's for a it's aimed at young people who are in those early stages of uh, psychosis, which is um, haven't received more than 12 months of treatment by um, uh, another public service or um, greater than 24 months of experiencing psychotic symptoms um, uh, untreated. And so your team includes psychiatrists so that you can and where it's appropriate, prescribe any psychotic agents to to these young people. You ra you run the full gamut of potential modalities for your customers, your clients. That's correct. Um, uh, like, like I mentioned before, yeah. we we provide the um depot clinics here or our clozapine uh, clinics as well. Um, and um, uh, like we said, that's uh, assessed by our psychiatrist, and they're the ones um who are who are writing the scripts and administering. Well, thanks, Dan. So, if we've got if we've got um, a patient that we feel is either at a very high risk of psychosis or is having a first episode psychosis, and they're in the right age bracket, how do we refer them to you or to your yes. colleagues? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, uh, I work at Headspace Adelaide, and uh, my phone and contact details are there. Um, uh, referrals can be made by absolutely anyone, so that includes doctors, nurses, um, GPs, psychiatrists, psychologists, school workers, mums and dads, um, and even young people can self-refer if, um, if they want. Um, a young person could even walk into a centre when we're open and um, get, get that assessment done. Um, the Headspace Youth Early Psychosis Program uh, provides, aims to provide uh, assessment within 24 hours and psychiatric review within 48 hours, and then a consultant psychiatry review within seven days of referral. Um, from there, they're allocated to their clinicians and a case plan is made, and we provide that uh, service metro-wide in Adelaide. Um, if anyone is listening from Adelaide and would like more information about the service or would you like for me to come and present to your um, workers or provide a bit of an in-service around ultra-high risk, I'm more than happy to do that. Please feel free to get in contact with me. Um, for other Headspace uh, Youth Early Psychosis Centres, um, all details are available at headspace.org.au. Um, uh, it, it really is a great program for those who may be at risk of psychosis or who have in experience first episode psychosis. So Dan, for people who are in other areas of the country but have a headspace near them but it's not one of the six sentences that you've identified, do regional headspaces contact one of these six centres for further advice? Is there, how's your networking going? It, it has happened and quite, quite often the centres will work between each other in, in terms of how we can provide the best support to that young person. Uh, but when we're speaking about regional Australia, uh, quite often they'll be going to those uh, you know, country mental health teams because like, like we said, the, the service, um, particularly for psychosis, does need to be quite assertive, which is why we provide service only to limited areas which have been um, defined by the research around what are going to be the best areas to provide this service in. Do you know whether there is uh, your services have been demonstrated to be such effectiveness that there's plans to expand them into other areas? Uh, look, the, there's currently being a review undertaken by uh, KMPG and the University of, um, it's either the University of Sydney or the University of New South Wales around the effectiveness of the program and hopefully by the end of the year we'll have some sort of word around what that means and uh, if these programs are going to be extended or not. Oh, well thank you Dan. So we look forward to hearing more about the service and its expansion and uh, perhaps um, it's great to know that some of these resources are available for some of our clients that are the most difficult to manage. We appreciate you joining us in QI Community. Let us know about the resources that you have um, and I'm sure we can look it up online and through the other usual channels for further information. So yeah, thank Dan, you. Thanks very much Pleasure. for joining us today.
Uh, Alison, I'll hand back over to you. Uh, I guess we're having a QI community next month and you may have some other information. Thank you.